Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Fetcher compatible receiver from RealACC, the RX5808 Pro Plus OSD. In this video I'm going to go over its features and then handle doors and compare it side by side with the Furious FEV Trudy and its predecessor, the RX5808 Pro Plus. The Pro Plus OSD comes inside this nice plastic case. Inside we can find the model. And in addition, we can also find these pin headers. It can be quite useful because these pins can sometimes break or bend, so in case of need, you can simply replace them. When you're buying this model, you can choose between a couple of options. First of all, you can choose the connector type of the antenna. I've got the SMA connector, but you can also buy it with an RP SMA connector. In addition, you can also choose the firmware of the model. You can buy the normal one, which is the same one that is being used on the RX5808 Pro Plus. And you can also get it with the Achilles firmware, which is the one that I've got. It costs $7 more, however, the Achilles firmware is not free and it costs 11 euros separately. So if you plan to get the Achilles firmware anyway, it's a better deal for you to buy the one that already comes pre-flashed with the Achilles firmware. As you can see, we didn't get any case cover in this version, so you can either get the case cover separately, you can also 3D print it, or you can also get this version that comes pre-bundled with this case cover, which is going to be a little bit cheaper than buying it separately. At a quick glance, the Pro Plus OSD and the Pro Plus versions look pretty much identical. On both, we can find on the button a micro USB port, which will enable you to flash a new firmware, and also controlling the options is done using this dial. However, on the Pro Plus version, we can find this IR sensor, whereas it's not present on the Pro Plus OSD. We can find this boot button, which will enable you to put this receiver into boot mode. And if you're going to press this button while connecting the micro USB port to your computer, you'll be able to flash a new firmware using the Betaflight configurator, which is very convenient. So you can just load a new hex file and just flash it using the Betaflight flasher. And it's quite simple. After powering on the model, we can see the Achilles logo. It comes pre-flashed with version 1.8. Now as you can see by default the OSD is turned on, which means all the settings that are shown on the LED screen are going to be shown on your Fetcher goggles as well. It's quite convenient in my opinion, however you can disable it on the settings. Now let's go over the settings. First of all you can change the filter between normal, fast and slow. It's going to affect the speed of changing between the antennas. You can also set the RSI checks between 5 all the way up to 150. If you are flying close, you should leave this number around 60. And if you're flying long range, you should set it to the maximum. You can set the call sign. You can calibrate the model. You can set the value of the alarm between off, 10%, 20%, and 30%. And this is going to kick off in case of low RSSI. You can flip the screen. This is going to affect obviously only the LED screen of the model. You can set the OSD between on and off. The OSD resolution is actually not the resolution, it's the picture format can be changed between NTSC and PAL. You can perform a factory reset and you can save and exit the settings. On the menu you can also perform a band scan. You can enter the model find option which will enable you to find a lost model using a patch antenna which is going to be connected to the B receiver and you're going to need to point out the page antenna to the lost area and then it's going to enable you to find it. Of course, the VTX has to be turned on and also a battery needs to be connected in order to use this feature. You can also enter an event mode. It's going to scan between all the channels and after finding the bands that are being used, you can just switch between them. It's pretty convenient on an event when you want to spectate a race. The Kerberos feature enables you to set the frequency to one frequency and the second receiver is going to switch between plus or minus one megahertz. So you can see the left one is set to 5473 and the other one toggles between 5473, 72 and 74. This is an experimental feature that might help you if you have some VTX problems. You can also perform an ultra search which is going to scan between all the bands. It takes about 2 seconds to complete which is extremely fast. Now I'm going to connect the camera which is set to 5860. And you can see that it found the signal instantaneously and now it's locked on 5860. Moving on, we can also use the lap timer feature which is going to use the RSSI in order to determine that you perform the lap. You can set the options by long pressing the dial. Now it's entering the sub menu where we can set the RSI lap trigger, the minimum lap time in seconds and the threshold nanoseconds. You can set these options and then press exit. And if you want to start measuring the laps, you need to either press the up or down. Now you can see it started after counting down. On the left side of the model, we can see the settings. As far as I know, it uses the B module in order to measure the RSI. And because we set it to minimum 10 seconds, you can see that if I'm getting it close, 
Right now it's not going to work, but after 10 seconds have passed, if I'm going to get the VTX closer, it's going to measure a new lap. Next we can enter manual search where you can set the frequency manually so we can switch between all the bands and channels. If you want to save a channel you need to long press it and then you can just press save. So now frequency 5436 was saved into the favorites and going back we can toggle between the favorite channels by entering the favorite options. Now we can switch between all the frequencies that we saved earlier and if you want to remove a channel you need to long press it and then you can either delete it or set it as the startup frequency. Now as you can see we can also see some data on the screen, we can see the RSSI of each receiver and it also shows more information such as the temperature, the call sign and also the battery status. So this was just a short overview of the Achilles 1.8 firmware and the next thing I'm going to do is to head outdoors and compare the Pro Plus OSD version next to the Freos FEB TrueD 3.7 receiver and the Pro Plus version which is running the default firmware. As for antennas, I'm going to use this triple feed patch antenna from ReelACC and this simple omnidirectional antenna from Fetchuck. I'm going to use the same antennas on these three models. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about any of these models or the Achilles Framer, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.